Bombshell Brunches, where your hosts Raquel Rodenberg and Christina Lau sip and spill with badass babes every Tuesday morning. It is welcome to Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to throw that out there. Hard to follow along. Saw you watching me, and I just had to take my opportunity. <laughs> oh, I love it! <laughs> it is welcome to Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, one day we'll have a theme tune, and uh, and and then we'll get that wrong too. I uh, hope we never have a theme tune. <laughs> I hope it's always unique, just like you and I. <laughs> That's right. Yes, like snowflakes. Uh, okay, speaking of nothing to do with that, um, uh, I'm so excited for our guest today. I'm so happy that you got to meet a mermaid, finally. A real live a real mermaid. live mermaid. <laughs> uh, but let's start with our learning, loving, loathing. And would you like to go first? I can go first. Yeah. Go first. Um, <laughs> I kind of said this in my, in my last week, but, but kind of ruminating on, on that fact of, I'm going to start with my loathing today. Um, it's just that I've kind of missed some time with loved ones before I left. And I wish, I wish that I had more time. Don't we mm. all wish that we just had more time? Like yes. I could, maybe I wouldn't need to sleep and I could have so much more time, you know? Isn't there a movie about that? I don't know, but I just think it'd be very useful to not have to sleep. (laughs) Or to be one of those people that sleeps like four or five hours a night and is okay with that. I already do that. That's, I'm (laughs) disturbed. I'm okay. Let's move on very quickly, please. But I need more hours. Um, (laughs) um, You know what? Four or five, I'm, I'm I'm a little less than fully... Fully good. Six, I'm, this is great. Six is a good number. <laughs> um, but I am loving my absolutely and completely and just, inc- they're incredible. Oh my gosh. My community is so special. I have, I guess over time you just, you, you release things that don't work for you and you take in things that do. And, um, at this point in my life, I just have such an incredible support system. And I think when you make big changes and when you're working hard on things, that's when everyone kind of comes out and you maybe don't even realize how many people are there supporting you until those moments. And Mm. I'm just very, 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 very grateful for everybody that I have around me. So um my learning was something that i took away from today's episode and i i didn't get a chance to kind of throw that quote in there while we were talking in the in the interview so i really wanted to bring it up now because it sat with me maybe not even in the way that it was meant to be intended but it did sit with me um one of the things that carolyn said was what is the purpose of the release of my sound what is the purpose of the release of my sound? And that sunk in with me so, so hard Mm. because my goal this year is to learn how to listen better. And specifically, I want to listen to people who have different opinions than I do. And I am opinionated, so um, that's not going to be an easy thing. Um, but I think it's really, really important and it's the only way that we're going to learn. And so my goal this year is to ask the questions, um, and let other people talk and hopefully learn more about them and what motivates people and why they think the things they do. Um, and really think about what is the purpose of the release of my sound? I love that quote. That's so great. Um, I love that you talk about community. So I'm going to go in with with the love as well and say that, you know, what I loved this last little week was, yeah, same, my community. I had a friend who just randomly saying thank you for uh, me helping out with self-tapes through the year. Uh, He he made me 
frozen dinners. He made me seven days of frozen Aww. dinners. And I was having the worst time. Uh, the last you know, few weeks, months for me have actually been, like I'm a pretty private person. So I don't speak a lot about what's going on in my personal life. And I like to keep it that way just because that's safe for me. Uh, but my goodness, my friend just was like, here is some, you know, keto friendly, because I'm doing keto right now, keto friendly um, meals for you. You can just chuck them in the microwave and they are delicious because he's like one of the top chefs in the city. So I'm so spoiled. And I have other friends who've checked in and I just, I love, I love, love even the people that I'm angry at. I love <laughs> for, for being like, I'm, this isn't okay, but you know, I love you. And, you know, things change and, and uh, friendships move one way or another. And yeah, I love that. Uh, and I love that Carolyn is building that community for the voice world. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's my loving my, my learning is, uh, is how to get back into my training as a singer, as a vocalist, Carolyn is my vocal coach and she's many people's vocal coach and she's honestly one of the best vocal coaches you'll ever find. And I have been remiss uh, in doing it every day and I have actually been loathing not singing. I lost my voice uh, and not in the physical sense. I metaphorically lost my voice for a little bit and I think that that is a natural thing to happen. But this episode with Carolyn, whether you are a singer or an actor or a creative person in any, in any form that has to speak, that has to be in front of other people, that needs to go to job interviews even, really taking five minutes a day to recognize what's going on with your voice and to root yourself and ground yourself in, in vocal power is, I, I couldn't think of a better gift through the winter to give you. And speaking of gifts, uh, Carolyn does talk about the fact that she is launching a brand new program. She, in the, in the episode, just note that she says it's already live. It's actually not. It will be live in, on the 1st of January. So we have some good insider kind of tips, gossip, links, and, uh, and we'll make it available to you. So if you're up for a 30 day challenge with us, uh, we're gonna do it. Raquel doesn't know this now, but she's just now uh, silently agreed to doing this with me. I we are going to do, it is five <laughs> minutes a day. We're all, we're all going to do this. Okay. Uh, and if you can't, that is also totally okay. <laughs> but if you would like to join us uh, on it, please do. Carolyn will give you your voice back. And I think that our future is, is finding our voice. So beautifully said also she's just a light you'll love her so without further ado we bring to you carolyn <laughs> i like that you clapped with me i like that we had like a little a applause musician. moment <laughs> oh my gosh carolyn is one of my favorite people uh welcome to our bombshell brunches episode with just the voice that everybody wants to have in their ear right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Carolyn Quinn has a, a company called CQ Voice. She is a phenomenal singer, songwriter, super nerd in the vocal world. And uh, she's my vocal coach. Uh, she's many, many people's vocal coaches uh, and has coached Juno award-winning artists with a current roster of uh, probably well over a hundred artists now that she coaches. And she has just launched her newest online program, Raw. And that's not raw. It's it, for Americans. That's raw <laughs> and an affordable, accessible vocal program that will get you speaking and singing with your own unique kind of confidence. She's passionate about community. That is how we met. Uh, she's passionate about vocal health, about speaking up and about being really kind to yourself. I am also 100% convinced that she is a mermaid, uh, but we'll get into that later. Uh, if you're watching the YouTube video of this, you will notice that her hair and uh, entire surroundings uh, really lean themselves to her being under the sea. Uh, so yes. I'm going to pass it straight over to Raquel because Raquel has uh, some questions first for you. Uh, but before I do, welcome. 
Thank you so much. I'm so excited that I get to see your beautiful face. This is wonderful. <laughs> you guys are here. It's real life. <laughs> it's real. If it's on video, it's real. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right now. <laughs> That's right. Oh my gosh. Well, I have to start out by saying I'm in love with your Instagram tutorials. They're Aww. so good and you're such a light. Like it's just yeah. whenever they come through my feed, I'm like, oh, it's just happiness and smiles. We've been so on point. Christina's been bringing on such amazing people to bombshells and uh, they're all such lights. Like it just, it really makes me so happy. Um, so I, I love just that word. Just start out yeah. <laughs> by saying that. Um, and then let's just go reel it back all the way. So you have an incredibly impressive resume, which Christina kind of read out a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and why, or when you got into singing and how you got into coaching? Oh my gosh, okay. You wanna go back three decades. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was a little, I love that you said light because I think that is why I am in the spot that I am because my passion and my call or whatever you say is I really want to be a lighthouse and I want to use my brain to be able to guide others and to be able to grow and learn and bring that and facilitate that in the voice world for others. So love that you saw that. And I am so passionate about this world coming together through light shining light, you know, light calls to light is good. Um, but going back, I have sung since I was a little girl and loved it, but I actually grew up in a family where I couldn't afford lessons. So um, I think that's probably why where I'm at now today. So I was in a family where you kind of just had to get what you got into and you and they couldn't afford extracurricular things. So fast forward, ended up being in post-secondary for voice, fell in love with the science of it, fell in love with that you can grow this thing and you can learn so much about it. Um, and you're not just born with it. I always just thought, oh, you're born a singer, you're born a speaker, you're born being able to have, you know, this voice inside of you, whether that's in musicality or in just your truth. And it was pretty cool to find out that you can really learn and grow. And I kind of got hooked right away. Graduated in, oh my gosh, 2007, maybe. And then I went on a hunt and I traveled North America and found voice gurus and fell in love more and more and started taking creativity and mixing it with science and started learning how to do that. So went through that, ended up actually um, pretty young at 19 coaching. You might hear my puppy, sorry. <laughs> But coaching at um, 19 years old for a like community program at a university and I was like oh my gosh what am I doing here and started learning how to connect to people how to grow and fast forward you know a decade and a half later and here I am on my own in Vancouver coaching a bunch of artists so I also toured for a long time I was in a rock band for a long time and got the ways of the road so I think that was a really good true learning experience a road warrior a ro yes <laughs> yes learned how to how to sing rock and roll and still be able to come out with a healthy voice <laughs> yeah i don't know i have a long story and it twists and turns but i always i always knew that i wanted to connect and bring voice understanding and help people find their voice in many different ways because our voice is so powerful and you must have found yours through singing multiple genres for those of you who are listening who are not uh, who are not singers, uh, but are speakers, you know, mm -hmm. in any capacity, and especially now more than ever with Zoom meetings being held all the time. Uh, I bet you've explored facets of, of your voice that we just take for granted. Oh, man. Yeah, I dive. I still am exploring facets of my voice. I have never gotten bored of learning about the voice. And every year I have new goals and intentions for myself of like, I can't do this. How do I do that? And I can't do this. How do I do that? And listening to others speak, other people sing, other people stand up on stage and talk to a multitude of people and listening to what can we bring to the table to affect a room? What can we do to bring to the table to actually be vulnerable and speak our true story and treat speak authentically like ourselves because I think a lot of times our voice really precedes us and a lot of times people don't know how to access their 
true, authentic, powerful voice. And that comes not only from the sound, but it comes from the energy and the light and the, who you are internally. So combining that two sides, the soul and the nerdy science, I love that. That's my passion. Mm-hmm. Well, that leads right into my next question. <laughs> so the voice holds a lot of emotion. And, you know, you're talking about showing up authentically and of I think right now, especially, there's a, a big movement towards people wanting to be authentic and raw. It used to be about like being super serious and buttoned down and not showing anything. And now mm-hmm. people are more and more moving out of that or trying to. Um, Which I is great because I'm not great at that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that serious. <laughs> but how do you... I mean, the voice can sometimes just like cut people off. So when they're in a in a moment of being uh, in a moment of high stress or in a moment mm-hmm. of trying to come forward and be more their authentic self, um, there's a level of vulnerability there that sometimes the voice can shut down, tighten up, and shut down. One hundred percent. How do you how do you get people out of that? How does that and and why does that happen and Oh, I could, uh, we could talk for two hours on this one, but um, yeah, so our voice is so connected to our mind and our stressors and, you know, the cortisone and everything that's happening in us. So I guess, first of all, I think it's understanding that this is a muscle and there are things that we can do in both the soul side, but also in the science side that can reverse that fear and reverse that tension. So I actually have this awesome story about this client that I work with and she had to speak in front of 600 people and she was really nervous. It was really important speaking engagement and she had a Fitbit on and she Mm -hmm. had, she looked down right before they announced her and her heart rate was at 140, which Mm -hmm. is very high. And then she did some breathing exercises that we do together and like got into her grounding and slowed down her heart rate and got into the mind space and the intention of why she was there. So mixing some of the science stuff that breath control exercises that actually can calm down your heart rate and actually can get you into this zone and then get into the intention. And then she walked onto stage, grabbed the mic, looked at her Fitbit and it said 82 beats per minute right before she spoke. So it's pretty phenomenal that you can, affect your own instrument from you know the external and then it affects the internal it's pretty cool mm-hmm. mm, that's amazing so breathing exercises do you have any other tips for yeah i um i guess for me too it would be thinking about it like the voice is a muscle so a lot of people don't know that if we actually take time and intention and learn how to control our muscle, learn how to build our muscle, then we can start making it more steady. We can change it to be really breathy. We can get it really nasally if we want. We can do anything we want and we can control our, our timbre and our pitch and get grounded. So it's something that we can all learn. I think people are just born with like, this is the voice or think that this is the voice that I have, but it's not true. It's a muscle just like Um, If you're riding a bicycle or if you're snowboarding, it's the same actually cortex in the brain that is training you how to do that. It's called the the laryngeal motor cortex. And that is telling your brain, oh, this is how I move my muscle. This is how I get breathy. This is how I match pitch. This is how I can change how I sound or slow down my voice and be in control, take space and do all that stuff. So it's pretty awesome. And I don't think people know that they have the control or they have the power to shift and grow it. Oh. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it's wonderful. I grew up singing in choirs and I just thought your voice is your voice. <laughs> no, some of, some of the artists that I work with that are actually the most furthest in their career, the most, you know, doing this the full time, they have trained and they have put the time in and they've invested it in themselves and found their true voice outside of their you know, anxiety and outside of the stress and outside of just not knowing what to do. It's, it's pretty cool. I have ha- I've had artists who come home uh, or come to me after they've come home from tour with vocal damage before they worked with a vocal coach before. And then they come and they straight train it all back and then they're stronger than ever and they don't damage it again. So it's just this incredible instrument and this muscle that we can actually learn to control. So... I feel like so many people need this. I used to teach kickboxing and 
for a year because it was in this really loud gym and they would mm-hmm. always blast the music, which was great. It was really fun to work out in, but um, I had no voice for a year. Like I should play you recordings. It's No, I believe you. <laughs> no, I. that is actually one of my goals. I want to make a curriculum for like um, fitness facilitators because yes. they lose their voice so much. And yeah, and it's honestly, if you had five minutes of intentional training, the stuff that I have learned and grown in, in, in the last 10 years and all the voice science stuff, it's so efficient. It doesn't take time in the sense of like, oh, I have to spend an hour and a half a day. If you spend five, 10 minutes, you're going to at least be able to maintain and strength train it. It's pretty cool. And I wow. think teachers as well, like especially yeah. young We all teachers. use our voice. Yeah. Like, I mean, I used to teach swimming and anything that, and I've got friends who are school teachers and you're constantly delivering you know, Mm -hmm. lectures, content, uh, it's just so useful. And we just don't have it in schools. We don't have voice health, you know? Oh my gosh. Uh, I have for granted. It is just getting into the music industry, which is crazy. It's so so crazy. It blows my mind. And like, I teach a lot of actors here too. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's just so interesting because we have power in our voice and we can learn how to, you know, learn how to actually access it. And I don't mean just like yell and scream, but be in command and be in control. And it's, it's actually really interesting because you can project over, you know, 25 students and do it really healthily. It's mm. our, and when we lose our voice, that is the, to me, one of the most vulnerable, but like not a good feeling. It makes us feel like we've lost a huge part of who we are. So I'm sorry you went through that, but <laughs> I'm so glad it's back. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I had, yeah, that was I, weird. I have a theory that I shared with Carolyn because I, I'm definitely 100% one of those people uh, that Carolyn was very diplomatically not pointing at me about, uh, who has had a ton of vocal training. I've had, and I have a pretty healthy voice, but I have a lot of barriers where we, we hit ceilings and Carolyn was like, yeah, okay, we're going we're gonna to do some things to get you through that. And I was like, I don't think you can. I don't think that's what possible. What ceilings? Can you, can you extrapolate? I, can't, I couldn't belt. So I couldn't, I couldn't do like a belting sound. My voice in my mind. Oh girl, I can belt. <laughs> well, good for you. That's about all Thank I can do. Rubbing it in my face. Oh wow. <laughs> I couldn't do anything else, but I can belt. <laughs> well, it, it, it was, it was really, and I went through theater school, just taking myself out of that equation and being like, well, won't get the leads, won't get, you know, cause I can't sing those high notes and we, we worked on it and you know i'll continue i continue to do those exercises um but we'll talk about the the course that that carolyn has put online because i'm just i'm so excited to do it i'm just but wait <laughs> what were some of the exercises that you did oh my <laughs> gosh did? yeah what was the best one you thought for the well i mean the the straw like yeah having... i use a lot of um straw phonation and water straw resistance therapy actually so the, it's super nerdy stuff and you might end up sounding like a cat sometimes too like weird sounds and stuff like that but most of the time it, um, a lot of it is actually focused on building your muscle and it's actually not that scary and not that weird of sounds at first we isolate the vocal cords and we actually build the muscle and there's a lot of vocal exercises that don't actually intentionally isolate the muscle and build it in connection so it's pretty cool what size there is right now out there and what you can do to strength train your voice and, and a lot of tongue oh water, sorry why is blowing water strengthening so water has oh i could we can go on this <laughs> it's okay go, go <laughs> yeah. she's a mermaid I love and you it. Asked the water question it was gonna yes come. i love water so um I guess we can just talk through a couple of different focuses, but when you're blowing through water and creating phonation or creating sound through water, through a straw, first thing that's happening is there's all this resistance, right? So if you're thinking of, you know, running or trying to run through a swimming pool, that's a lot harder in water than when you're out of land or mm-hmm. out on land. See, I am a mermaid, you're right. <laughs> so you're building this strength, this strength through this resistance, but that resistance is also actually pushing down your muscle and opening up your throat position. So it's almost this, if, if we tried it, I should have gotten you to, to, to grab some straws and some waters, but if you tried it, you would feel this drop and your throat would open up and all of a sudden you're in this position. It's almost like if you are an athlete and you're getting trained to just have your body in the proper position. It's pretty awesome. 
And then on top of that, you learn how to regulate your air and your breath control because all of a sudden you're looking at the bubbles, you can hear yourself, you can see if you're using air, if you're overblowing air and you start learning regulation. So you're isolating your vocal cords, you're building that muscle, you're dropping your larynx, you're opening up your throat and putting everything into this beautiful position. Yes, Christina. And then you are also um, learning how to regulate your air and building your lung capacity. It's pre and it feels good. It's rehabilitative as well as strength training. So you can't, um, it comes from the medical, com medical community actually. So a lot of speech language pathologists use this to heal vocal cords that have been damaged or have trauma. Too. That's interesting that you say that because um, I know my grandmother was in the hospital earlier this year and and what she went in for was also affecting her lungs. So after the surgery, she had to do this exercise where she would blow air into that's why I was asking mm -hmm. too. Yeah, she would blow air into this little thing and you had to get the ball to yeah, so as that long as you could. Yeah, so that's a lung expansion exercise because she's building her lung capacity back. That is mm. like a really important thing to start bringing yourself back into lung health for sure. Mm -hmm. So Carolyn, I mean, I, I just left so that I could go and get the straw. <laughs> and Edwin, that is my... Oh uh, my God, he's so fun. <laughs> Edwin is, is my little mug that I do my straw exercises in. And for those of you not on YouTube, he's... he's go to YouTube. Is just face. go to he's, YouTube. Don't even explain mug. it. Go uh, check it out. And, <laughs> I and love Carolyn this. and I did a lot. I have my mermaid water bottle oh, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mermaid water bottle and Edwin, uh, best of friends. So really, uh, without giving away too much, because obviously you need to take the course to really do all these things safely. Um, yeah. But with these, you know, Carolyn gave me a straw. And, uh, and uh, am I right in saying that, you know, how big the straw is is also a factor it's a huge factor yeah so usually if i'm working with someone at the beginning i will get them on a bigger straw so something that's maybe the size of a normal drinking straw the smaller the diameter of the straw the more the back pressure so the more you're gonna actually have to you're gonna isolate and build that muscle so it gets really hard if you're new to it and you're using a teeny little straw we're not used to being able to use our muscle we're, we're used to overblowing and over pushing and when you sink through a straw you can't push so you're mm -hmm. actually relying on your voice instead of all of these bad habits that we build throughout the years and then you puff out your cheeks a little bit this was kind of exercise number one and you make your make your bubble sounds for as long as you can, uh, or I guess 30 seconds. And I and and that's just step one, right? That's just step one. Yeah, and step one. And I, I would love to give them step two, too, because it's please. just really fun to create sound. So just creating, <laughs> I call these freedom slides in I've, my created this word about freedom slides because I believe our, our voice knows where it wants to go more than our brain does. Mm -hmm. So I, my goal is that you just pick pitches that just come out of you naturally at first instead of me telling you what to do. You have so much more intelligence if you're not listening to your conscious but your subconscious sings for you. So we create sound through freedom and that just means whatever comes out of you and making a weird sound there but you're starting to actually train this opening of the throat this connection to the vocal folds and building a lot of muscle without ooh, sorry without it being a, a hard experience it's actually really healthy and you can't hurt your voice so that's awesome yeah. and who doesn't want to be a weirdo blowing through water <laughs> oh my gosh i'm nerding out so hard right now <laughs> um, yes it's super this the science behind it is wonderful and honestly just feeling protected mm -hmm. when you're doing it that straw work uh changed i mean i i was doing it for about a month and a half recorded uh the the demoed my album and it was like night and day night and day wow you sound amazing yeah, yeah and, it's, and we do a lot of stuff out of the water too but that requires I would want to walk through some stuff with people for that, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's so many things about the voice that we can release um, and find our power. That's pretty so, beautiful. Well, this is a perfect segue because, you know, speaking confidently uh, and 
you know, the science behind how speaking confidently and consciously can really set you up for success. Mm. That's something that I think, again, we don't talk about a lot. And I have my little theory of uh, us being, what percentage water are we? 70, 80% water? Oh yeah. Like a lot. We have a lot like, in us. 80, a lot of I would water. say 80. I think it's 80. And mm-hmm. I used to I used to get re- realized that I used to get really down when I didn't sing every few days. Um, and I didn't know what it was. I was just grumpier. And I think that's why maybe I was a bit grumpy this morning. Uh, and <laughs> by bit, I'm that, that's a huge understatement. Um, but one of the things that I theorized was that if we're all made up of these like water molecules, mm-hmm. then by making humming sounds, by blowing, like by doing all of this, we're giving our bodies an internal massage by singing oh, and yeah. doing these, these um, voice exercises. We are literally massage, we're self caring for our insides and mm-hmm. for what constitutes 80% of who we are, mm-hmm. which is amazing that people don't know that. And again, like this, I thought of this maybe 15 years ago, I was like, why am I feeling this way? And then I did a check and I was like, oh my gosh, when I do this, I feel a lot happier and a lot more stable. So not just setting up voice confidence um, for what comes out, but Mm -hmm. really setting yourself up kind of well. What do you know about that from a science perspective? Oh yeah, there is so much research behind singing or creating sound and actually happiness or actually shifting your brain and build and releasing healthy endorphins. So they've uh, calculated after only 10 minutes of creating sound and it doesn't have to be good singing, just make sound, just release, be in your freedom. Like you could sing in the shower, you could make, you know, sing a Disney song. It doesn't matter. You could hip hop, you could rap, you do whatever comes out of you, or you could sing terribly out of tune. It's not about doing it well. It's about releasing and being in your freedom. And there is a stimulation in your brain. And all of a sudden there is so much more endorphins releasing. And I, I, but going to what you're talking about, I believe that as soon as you are getting like energy and this movement coming out of you, there's so much empowerment of self when you start to learn that you have control over this thing that we use for 95% of our life. We're Mm -hmm. speaking all the time. We are, you know, maybe we're not singing all the time, but we are speaking all the time and our voice, whether it's the sound or the truth inside of us, you know, the confidence and the grounded experience. If we are walking in that and we are out allowing ourselves to be in that moment and be in that freedom and be in that release, we find a lot more joy. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I I work with this um, client and she is awesome. She is a badass boss. She works at the top of her company and she just, she came to me maybe in her mid forties and she wanted to learn how to sing. And she had been told from a previous coach that she would never be able to sing well. She would never be able to hit IC. She would never be able to do this. Like, nah, you're not good, but all these things. And she told me this like a long time ago. We've been together for a long time and I love her dearly. And I, in my young coach years, got so riled up and it was like, what? That's not true. You can learn. It's a muscle. And she recorded her first single last week just for herself. And she has been crushing it and worked hard and learned how to sing. And she couldn't sing before in the sense of where she's at now. And she has done so much better in her entrepreneurship and in who she is and her business thrived. And she, she's like, Carolyn, I can speak in meetings and, you know, and I can walk in there and people listen to me and I can have command and power because I know how to use this. So I just went off topic there, but I just think there's so much, you know, that we, there's a disservice to ourselves if we're not taking care of our power and a lot of our power is connected to our voice for sure. And there's so much tightness that I think people don't realize. You did a, um, you did an IG tutorial at one point. It was about, yes, yes, <laughs> oh, the stretching. And I did it. And it was like, I'm so tight. I was like, oh, my oh my gosh. I have like 25 pressure points that we can release. It's, it's nuts how much tension we have or the tension in our tongue. If you're yeah. listening to this. You should pull out your tongue right now and you, okay, let's do it. Pull yeah. out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to pull out my tongue with my sweater because that's going to happen right now. And, and then you twist it and be very careful because we don't realize how much tension we have. 
know. I'm making you guys do this. I'm so uh, sorry. No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> And the more you get in the back, but what it does actually, there's eight muscles in the tongue. So the more we unlock these muscles and the only way we can release the tension in the tongue all the way back is from actually like being a physiotherapist to our own tongue and getting back there. Yeah. And what happens is you unlock these two zones back here. And a big part of that is why belting is hard or why being, yeah, the root of our tongue. Mm-hmm. The root of our tongue goes all the way down, just to the top. Yeah, of I can our feel that all the way back. <laughs> yeah. So the more you twist it, and then just release, like twist it on one side, breathe in, relax. It's I have, there's another one on my Instagram. It's like it's super silly. I'm like twist your tongue, but it's awesome because what happens to your voice and your throat that opens up is incredible. Yeah. So we don't realize how much tension we have. That's and the sure. side bends as well. My goodness. We used oh, to do yeah. our side I have, I have to do one of those for, oh. for IG. That's yeah, good idea. Have, please do. do yes, the, rib yeah, you got to continue with that because I love them. Oh, oh I will. That's I will. So good. I love that's it. So good. Let's get nerdy. <laughs> so, man. Well, Raquel, you're in the right you, place. Did you want to talk about the worst habits now? Or do you want <laughs> to ask about them later? Yeah, I want to ask. What are – so I'm, I have absolutely no doubt that we're – many of us probably – me specifically, are doing terrible things for our voice uh, every single day. So I want to know what are some of the top worst habits for your voice that people are doing often? Okay, I'm going to flip this question a little bit because I, I, I get this asked this a lot from artists that I work with or speakers that I work with. And in my, it, I would want everybody to come from the other side and be like, Am I taking care of this instrument? Am I working it out? Do I understand it? And and am I empowering it? And then what happens is all of a sudden all these dominoes just fall and a lot of the bad habits just disappear. But also, if you have bad habits and you're living with this really powerful, awesome athletic voice, then the bad habits are not actually going to be able to affect you more. So I, ha- I, I work with people that really push their voice to the extreme, like contemporary vocalists, rock and roll, you know, pop singers. In, they, they expect singers to do so much hard work these days. And they're on tour, you know, five, six shows a week. And instead of thinking about, of, of, you know, do I not eat chips or coffee or drink coffee or all these things, it's more so, what are you doing to keep your voice really healthy? What are you doing to empower it and keep it athletic? And then if you want to have a balance and you want to have coffee, that's fine. But um, I will try to think of some bad habits. I try to really give people more freedom mm-hmm. and then it's come from the other side. Does that make like sense? Like coming from the side of abundance, you're crowding out the bad rather than Can I, <laughs> yeah. disciplining yourself for the, yeah. 100%. Yeah. But, Can I make um, a suggestion though? Yeah. When I, I think what, what I mean and what I think Raquel might mean by bad habits or what are the, the biggest unconscious uh, hmm. kind of pointers where we go, ooh, and I can give you your first one because you said it to me uh, straight away. Drink enough water in the day. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. A, a, Back to a water. Habit that you need to adopt. And if you want to flip it, like good habit, drink enough water. You need to keep your, your voice, you know, kind of l- lewd. 100%. Yeah, <laughs> you do. Well, we have, as, as speakers or singers or vocalists, but even honestly, just as humans, because we are made out of 80% water. But if you're listening to this and you are, someone that uses their voice for a living, what's, we always think, oh, I'll just, you know, crush a glass of water right before I speak or right before I sing. But our vocal folds sit below our food pipe. They sit in, sorry, or they sit in the windpipe. So when we're drinking water, it is coming down and it is not even passing through our vocal cords. It is not hydrating us. So we need a lifestyle of hydration. We need to, what happens is the water goes through our body it goes to our brain, the H2O, and then our brain's like, okay, now I'm going to hydrate these different portions of us. And our vocal cords are not the first organ it hydrates. Our brain is more important, our heart, our skin. So we do want a lifestyle of hydration. There's also um, nebulizers out there for vocalists, little vocal mists. And what that does is it takes the water and it makes them really tiny little particles smaller than steam. And that actually is something that you can inhale it and it hydrates the vocal folds. 
I would say another bad habit that people have is they hold their air. They don't use their air. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand the function of the voice is from our air. I breathe in, I have these beautiful big lungs, and then I release air. It comes up through my vocal folds, my vocal folds vibrate, and then the sound waves can come out. But if I'm holding my air and I forget to breathe and I keep talking, there can be a lot of tension from that. I can also manipulate my voice and I can change it from adding a much more air or I can you know, use my air and bring it forward and bring it into this uh, nasalness and this resonance and I can change all these different things. So yeah, I would say hydration and air and, and ten outward external tension. So really just taking care of your body making sure you massage it. I think a lot of people forget that the voice is a muscle. And if you think of anything else athletic, you stretch, right? You stretch before you do it. Mm -hmm. So really taking care of that instrument and stretching your neck, stretching all the muscles. It takes around 100 muscles to sing, and people don't even know wow. how to do any of that. So there's so many things that you can do to make you a, a better speaker or a better singer. And I don't even like that word better, but maybe just make you feel more empowered and find your true authentic voice. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. You know, it, one of the things that I've learned a lot over the past, uh, the past episodes that we've done, all of the episodes that we've come through, we really, it can be really overwhelming to think, okay, I'd like to succeed. Here are all of the little steps that I can take. And every episode we have with another guest is another step that you can take forward. Mm -hmm. And what's wonderful about it is that we have the keys. What's not wonderful about it is that it's super overwhelming if we're not mm -hmm. careful. Because we talk about, you know, Raquel and I are so lucky that we have all these people that inspire us. And then we go into the world and we have to make money and we have to, you know, live our daily yeah. lives and we have to do our assignments. And it becomes not achievable yeah. because there is just so much that we can do to better ourselves. And we don't have kids. Like we don't have, we're not responsible for, well, Raquel's responsible for other lives. She has four, have four fur pups. babies. <laughs> yeah, she has fur babies. Um, but, you know, so I just want to go through it and I want to break it down a little bit uh, so that people can maybe do a five minute, a five mm. minute check in, you know, yeah. to summarize what you have talked about to date. I, I wanted to kind of like put it into like water, I, water, air, earth, and fire. And mm. because you have the water side, we've talked about the water straw um, practice, you know, breathing into you know, using your air in, in, a, in a conscious manner and mm -hmm. whether that means releasing some tension to provide a better space for that air to come out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you might, not, you might not be able to do all the, the tongue twists and placements or, or you might not have time to get really nerdy, but you might have time for a couple of side twists, a couple of stretches mm -hmm. uh, that maybe take you one minute. You also always talk about grounding, and that's the earth element. That's what I was going to go next. So Can I speak to there. that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. let's go there. I was going to say, I think another negative habit that can be turned positive is understanding your why and understanding why am I you know, on stage right now, or why am I in this podcast or in this vocal booth or standing in front of my client, whatever you do, and what is the purpose of this release of my sound? You know, I work with um, a bunch of artists and my thing, my, what I ask them to do is right before, already when you're on stage and you're stressed out and there's all this energy and you're like, oh, I hope I do well. And there's, you know, ah, my throat hurts. I am tight. I'll, you know, I slept terribly in that couch, whatever. Getting into a moment of why are you here? Why are you doing what you do? you know, and just, it can take 10 seconds. It can take one minute and just giving yourself that time and space. And to me, that is your voice too. That is a huge part of your voice is what am I doing right now? What am I, what is my three intentions? How am I going to affect this space? You know, and for me, is it, is it bringing understanding and light? Is it bringing playfulness? Is it bringing freedom and being vulnerable so that someone else can be vulnerable there's so many different things that we can bring but that to me is the grounding and what's really cool is you can use a breathing exercise think of that at the same time and then you can just walk forward in your power 
and your voice will be more grounded. Your heart rate will be more grounded. Your breath control will be more grounded. And then you will be able to affect. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I also like just imagining that I am speaking or I am singing or I am breathing from the bottom of the earth all the way up. It comes from the wholeness in me and not just from this top portion of me. Pretty, pretty I love I love that you're using the elements. It makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would. Well, I, why, I do. That's why the result is fire. There's mm. power. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you have we've got your water, air, earth, and the result. Yeah. utilizing all those things is fire. Yeah, I could, um, maybe I give you like a two minute regime you could every, do every day. I am doing a 30 day challenge. Um, so you, that's five minutes every day that you could do. But if you ha- say you just had two minutes, I would take 30 seconds and I would take a glass of water and I would take a straw and I would take a deep breath in and I would just blow you know, for 20 or 30 seconds. And this starts grounding your heart rate. It starts dropping and massaging you internally and opens up your voice. And it just gets you into this like little meditative space. And then I would do freedom slides, find your voice, find your true sound, freedom it away. Be silly for a second, give yourself the play, give yourself the joy for, you know, four in a row. And then I would take a moment and I would breathe into four different spaces and I would take my hand, I'd breathe into my chest. Let's do it, we wanna do it together, let's do it. So take a moment and just put it and breathe into your chest and can you feel your heart rate and can you breathe into that top portion of you? And then I would breathe out and then I would move into my rib cage and I would feel, can I feel my intercostals? Can I feel this portion of me expand? I'd breathe into that. And then I would take my hand, two hands, I put one on my core and one on my low belly. And I would take a deep breath there. Loving all parts of me, allowing it to be free and open. And then my final breath, I would imagine I am grounded and I'm powerful and I'm a superhero and I'm awesome and I'm a badass and I would sit in that truth. And, and then I would take a deep breath in and release it out. Right? Oh. <laughs> Who doesn't want to breathe? It's so good. And connect to self. Oh, oh my gosh. Combine this with with uh, some of the tips that we were getting earlier. And I think you've got like the, the best day ever. <laughs> I think that's what we need to do. Maybe we need to create a bombshell brunch's best day ever. Yes. yes. And just tips from everyone that we've had on because everyone's oh, be so such good. amazing tips. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes. Okay, I'm going to write that down and make a note. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess really, you know what? To me, that wraps everything up quite kind of beautifully. Um, tell us a little bit before we go about the courses. Just break them down. Tell us what's coming because I know that you've been working mm-hmm. on this for years. Uh, yeah. I want for people to understand what they can get out of it mm-hmm. and it's how important it is for you to look into yeah for sure um i guess it, number one it, the heart behind it is super important or my why behind it is right now i i do i i coach over 150 artists and speakers and i work with people one-on-one a lot but i wanted to figure out a way to combine the science and the knowledge that i have and the soulful connection when i get to connect with people and be able to make it more affordable and more accessible and It'll make it a community experience. So I've had this dream forever, probably because when I was younger, I couldn't afford lessons. And then on top of that, I was just like, no, this science isn't out there. We need to show people there's so much more their voice can do and you can shift it very quickly. So I've created um, this community called Roar. And what you get is you get to go on this private space and there's a Imagine it's almost like, um, I guess like a website, but for where you can post and share and connect and there's all that, but you also get a bunch of training videos and training courses and there's foundation to lung expansion, to muscle building, to learning how to release um, and learn how to do flexibility and runs and all these different things. But that can be overwhelming. So what I've created, I've created where you just 
are guided every day. And some days you have a workout, some days you have like a three minute rehab recover day. And some days it's just me being like, Hey, badass, take the day off. You're amazing. But if you follow <laughs> it, it's exactly what you need to do to grow. Cause I just wanted to take out the questions and I wanted to make it really efficient and effortless and, and then scalable. And, and scalable. scalable and I also am we're going to do live challenges and live question Q and A's and group live zoom performance classes because I just want to get that knowledge out there and build a community of badass vocalists yeah it's I'm excited who should take it I, it's for anyone that's beginning to want to learn how to make their voice more athletic or learn how to, it's, it's right now way more for singers and actors, but it is mainly athletic training. So if you are a speaker too, you should take it. And it's all the way from there's beginner courses to advanced and we're eventually going to get crazy. The 30 day challenge is free and I'm going to release that. And it starts really simple, but it might be hard if you're new to it. And then the last day is insane. And it's pretty cool what we build. Oh, I want to do days. it. Yeah. I want to do that 30 day challenge. I think where do we it. find the 30 day challenge? Um, uh, it's going to be on YouTube or it's happening right now. Okay. Yes. So I will send you guys the links and you can post it, but you can go to my Instagram at CQ voice, or you could go to YouTube and find me or my website. I think it's, it's also a really good idea to subscribe because I, mm. I subscribe to CQ voice mailing list um, because you get inside deals you get uh, kind of insider knowledge and if you want to get on there first uh, I am very conscious and uh, very grateful for Carolyn taking on being able to scale this because you know for a lot of creatives starting out and especially with this pandemic people can't afford shit right now uh, 100%. and so you know let's keep our voices safe mm -hmm. when it is getting really hard to kind of afford things and um and do what you can and you'll get a lot of these tips for free yeah. and whenever you feel like you can afford it uh you can take you you have some options now you have like some options for you to really feel like mm -hmm. you're giving your body a nice internal massage on a daily basis and that's what i know i need you know even though you say it's it, it can be like you know beginners uh the first stages i feel like i'm never i'm never good enough that i don't need to do them. And this moment, oh, yeah. I was like, I have to start again. I've left it. I've left my voice alone in the wrong way. No, it's not. I, the, I will, sorry, I know we're almost wrapping up, but um, <laughs> the stuff that I do, like what you get, whether you've sung before or you're advanced is I, I, I'll work with someone who's been touring for 20 years and I give them the very beginning foundation. That's mm -hmm. going to, that is just the very beginning video. And there's six months worth of training on there. So just the very first one. And it is hard for them. It is yeah. something that expands and, and uh, hard in a good way. It is like growth orientated because no matter how much we know about our voice in the art side, we don't, a lot of us don't know how to make it more free and more open and more powerful from the athlete side. So it's yeah. pretty cool what you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the athlete side. I'm also going to do some scholarships because I just really want people to be able to afford and connect and grow and find their true authentic voice. So oh. it, it'll be good. It's well, be we good. will be keeping in touch with you. We will be, I mean, I know we just are such big fans of what you do. So Raquel, did you have anything else to add before I we, before we say I our ideas? I think that wraps it up. Yeah. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you for taking care of our voices. And I have to say, I did my voice exercises before I got on this morning's uh, series of Zoom. You sound so amazing. I thank you so much. Oh, yes. Uh, and Raquel's now going to have to start. I know. I was like, we I just do mine. <laughs> But now I know, now I know what to do. Just find a straw, find some water, freedom yeah. slide. So if you're someone who is struggling financially, if you're somebody who uh, isn't uh, available uh, in the capacity that they'd like to be to be able to afford things, get in touch with us. Let us know if we can connect you with some resources that Carolyn has provided for free, then we will 100% do that uh, at any level, uh, wherever you're at with your life. Thank you, Carolyn, for being such a badass mermaid. Yeah. Oh, I love Thank that. You. Thank you for having me, you guys. You are beautiful, wondrous, badass humans. And I'm so grateful to be in your light-filled presence. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> you joined our song. Oh, always. <laughs>
Thanks for listening, Bombshells. In order to continue to elevate, subscribe and don't forget to click that little bell so you can get notified every time we have a new badass brunch. Until next time, stay focused, fierce and fabulous.